Quits, I'm Paul Moore. I'm with the Canadian High Commissioner to Guyana, Mr. Mark Berman. And Mr. Mark Berman, uh, you've been here for 20 months. Uh, you want to tell us how impactful those 20 months have been thus far? It's a pleasure to be here to talk to, with you today. And uh, indeed, this has been a, a very impactful 20 months in, in Guyana. And uh, never a dull moment. It has been an exciting time to be here in Guyana and an exciting time for Guyana. So it's, uh, it's, a, it's an honor for me to serve uh, and represent Canadian interests at this time during Guyana's, uh, Guyana's uh, development and uh, with the exciting uh, uh, activities that are taking place here, both uh, politically and economically. In that same vein, how does the High Commission support Canadian investments in Guyana? We do it in a number of ways. Uh, we have a Senior Trade Commissioner, uh, which is a relatively new position uh, for Guyana, and I think it reflects the, uh, you know, the growth of the, 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 the relationship. So the Senior Trade uh, Commissioner, so the trade, the trade Commissioner's Service can provide significant assistance to Canadian companies that are looking to invest. They will point them in the right direction, they will help them look for partners, they will uh, provide them with advice on legal assistance and point them in the right direction to get advice on, on taxation and regulatory processes. So that's obviously one way that we do that. Um, the Chamber itself, uh, which we, are, uh, we strongly support and participate in, also is uh, a way for Canadian business to ask questions and to find out not only the opportunities but how to navigate the uh, you know the investment opportunities that are here and we we encourage uh, Canadian companies as well to go to go invest and uh, advise them on the various agencies and the processes here mm -hmm. so there's a number of ways that we can do that. High Commissioner any strategic um, strategies in place you mentioned earlier in our early conversation mm -hmm. the need for Canadians and maybe Canadian businesses to get a better awareness and understanding of that and the opportunities here. Yeah. So our number one piece of advice is come down here. Great. Uh, you need to come down and, uh, and meet uh, potential partners, have meetings with the government uh, and seek out potential partners. Uh, and that is the Canadian model. Uh, Canadian companies tend to come, they want to be here for the longer term, they look for partnerships. Uh, and, uh, and, and the one thing that I've learned is that people-to-people -people contacts in Ghana are really important. Um, it's one of the reasons that I, that I, that I uh, always suggest that there's a strong relationship between the province of Newfoundland and Guyana. And there's been a long relationship between that province and Guyana that stretches back decades and that had more to do with the uh, trade in rum and, and salt cod, but it has developed over the years. Uh, the province of Newfoundland has offshore oil. Uh, they are a community with a small population, a large territory, and very, very close communities. And, uh, and, 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 and that kind of uh, is, is exactly what you have in Guyana. Natural resources, a large country, smaller population. And so there's a very close relationship. And, and the people-to-people -people contacts go a long way uh, in, in, in uh, developing partnerships and, and doing business. Mm -hmm. There's also a meeting with Mr. Bobby Kwan, CEO yes. of Canada Commercial Corporation. You want to highlight on that? So when uh, Canada, uh, when Minister Ng was in Canada, in Guyana in mm -hmm. February, one of the outcomes of that visit was the signing of a mem memorandum of understanding by the minister on behalf of the CCC, the Canadian Commercial Corporation, and the government of Guyana. CCC is a very interesting government agency that allows for government-to-government -government contracts. Uh, so that what means that if the CCC gets involved in a, a project, um, they are providing a government of Canada guarantee and will act as the, uh, the contractor. And if there's issues with the contract, the government of Canada guarantees to see it through that the financing and the, uh, and the, the work is done on time. Uh, so that MOU was signed in, uh, in February um, and it was a strategic MOU. Since that time, we've had members, uh, uh, senior officials from the CCC come to Guyana 
uh, and uh, they've had a number of meetings with a number of the ministries in the private sector to talk about opportunities. And this was an opportunity uh, in in Canada for Minister Singh to meet with Bobby Khan, uh, who is the the, the chair, uh, the CEO of the CCC, just to follow up that conversation to talk about some of the opportunities. It was an opportunity for for Mr. Kwan to talk about what the CCC brings to the table, and for Minister Singh to talk about some of the opportunities here. And we're very hopeful that this will result in real projects in the very near future. And I'm sure Dr. Singh, the uh, senior finance minister, was in shoes, and he spoke, and I'm sure he set policies to make all this become reality. I initially talked to uh, Minister Singh about CCC about a year ago and he immediately recognized uh, what uh, what an agency like the CCC brings to the table. So he was quite enthused about uh, uh, strengthening that relationship. So I, I, I you know, it's, it's, it's somewhat of a unique uh, um, mechanism um, and it provides the Government of Canada guarantee on any project. Uh, and so he not only can identify the types of projects that Guyana is looking at where CCC could be involved, but he also recognizes what, what added value CCC will bring to these large projects. And there's some key sectors that we're focused on, infrastructure, ICT, aerospace, clean tech, yes. security sectors. Absolutely. Do you want to develop on that? Well, I mean, the, the most obvious projects are the large infrastructure projects, of which there are many in Guyana, and that's one of the things that the you know the uh, oil and gas sector are going to allow the government to be able to strengthen the infrastructure in the country: bridges, roads, hospitals, uh, energy infrastructure. So we've had discussions about potentially, uh, for instance, the Amaila Dam project. Uh, hydro projects of which Canada has significant experience. Uh, Canadian companies uh, may be interested in some of the bridge projects, so there was interest in looking at uh, the bridge between uh, across the quarantine between uh, Guyana and Suriname. Uh, and uh, most uh, relevant at the moment uh, is the gas to shore project, which obviously is one of the largest infrastructure projects that Guyana has ever undertaken, which will significantly reduce energy costs. So that is a, a, a process that's in the works at the moment and it's a Canadian consortium that has been shortlisted and we're very optimistic oh, right. about that. Mm -hmm. So, so and that and CCC is involved in that project and would bring the government guarantee to that project if this consortium was identified as the, as the, as the winning bid. Right. What else can we expect going forward after this MOU? Well, we're looking forward to uh, encouraging uh, Canadian uh, investment in procurement, for instance. Uh, we're looking at potentially uh, uh, um, aircraft. Um, CCC actually grew out of World War II, the growth that, uh, and it was a mechanism to help Europe grow and develop after the war. And so its initial uh, focus was on uh, um, military uh, um, procurement uh, and so they still do that and so they are still very much involved in the procurement of aircraft, helicopters, uh, aeroplanes, uh, and shipping and that type of thing. So there are opportunities in that area but they are involved in many many other areas including potentially uh, agriculture and they have projects around the world where they play a role. Uh, at, uh, marine uh, uh, agriculture, um, and uh, um, the development of, uh, of technology in the various agricultural sectors. I think agriculture is an area for, that is potentially a significant role for this country. That's right. Um, Canada is one of the largest agricultural uh, countries in the world. Mm -hmm. We're the fifth largest exporters of agricultural products. Um, there are two million Canadians who work in the agricultural uh, agriculture uh, industry. It's about seven percent of our workforce, um, about one hundred and thirty-nine billion dollars, and we export about just over eighty billion dollars of agricultural products. So we have a lot to offer in that area, and uh, and so. The the president is the lead and the champion within the CARICOM, President Ali, yes. uh, and talks about this 25 by 25, you know, the reduction of food, food imports, 
um, by 2025. And one of the uh, one of the uh, um, uh, uh, the issues that we have been talking in Canada about is we're not talking just about the Guyanese population. We're talking about a Caribbean population and the tourist population. So it's a significant potential investment opportunity. And really, there are three countries within the CARICOM that have the agricultural potential: the Suriname, Guyana, and Belize. Mm -hmm. And so there's real opportunity here. And so that's an area that we're going to focus on to try and uh, uh, encourage both investment and Canadian technology uh, to assist with the growth of the agricultural sector. But pointedly, the Canada Guyana Chamber of Commerce Gala, what do you think now is the new role or the continuing role for the Chamber? So uh, the first thing I would mention is the Chamber was just created in 2020, as I mentioned before, uh, uh, during the pandemic. So at the time it had 28 original members. That has now grown to 62. So one of the, the challenges and one of the goals will be to continue to grow the membership, both on the Guyanese and the Canadian side. And obviously one of the main objectives uh, of the gala being held in Toronto was to be able to make the chamber uh, um, uh, more visible to the Canadian private sector. So one of the goals is to have a strong Canadian membership. Um, and uh, you know, then the next uh, uh, goal is to strengthen the partnerships. The Chamber is an important tool uh, for Canadian investment. It can provide advice, it provides guidance, it provides potential partnerships, uh, marrying up Canadian and uh, Guyanese uh, companies that can work together. Um, there is a very interesting uh, policy committee that has a policy dialogue, business to business policy dialogue on various issues that will be relevant to investments in Guyana. So there's a lot of work to do. We want to ensure that there's equal partnership, Canadian and Guyanese, on the Chamber. So it is a true Canada Guyana Chamber of Commerce. And your office has constant engagement in the Chamber? We do. We're very supportive. We are. Uh, we sit on the Chamber as, as, as uh, uh, observer members uh, and uh, we work very closely with them. Uh, we provide opportunities here at the official residence uh, for events and we support uh, their activities. So it's uh, a very useful, uh, it's a very useful uh, uh, partnership. And of course, the uh, the Canadian Trade Commissioner Service uh, provides a particular service. So working closely with the Chamber is a very good partnership. Mm -hmm. The input in terms of the extracting sector mm -hmm. with Canadian companies, mm -hmm. your assessment at this time? That's an interesting question because there have been questions with oil and gas whether or not there's going to be less attention. Uh, I believe that it is still in, in a, a sector that is going to grow. Canada actually has the, is the largest uh, into foreign investor in extractives outside of oil and gas continues to be. Um, there's significant knowledge uh, uh, within the extractive sector in Canada about Guyana. There's many companies that have been here for a long time. I think that gold continues to be a, uh, uh, a very attractive resource for Canadian investment and partnership. Um, and I think it's important to remember that you know the extractive industry, the mining industry, uh, hires a significant number of Guyanese uh, 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 workers. The Canadian companies come and they invest. Uh, there's a significant number of Indigenous workers who work in, in, in with Canadian companies. Um, so it's a win-win situation um, and I think it's going to grow beyond gold, um, rare minerals. I think there's an opportunity, uh, there's already, uh, I believe manganese has been mined for the first time, um, potentially copper. So I see it as a growth industry and one that Canada will continue to partner with Guyana on. Great. Um, closing out now, I, we just touched on it, but the Canada Fund. Could you highlight a bit on that and how that can help? So the Canada Fund for Local Initiatives is a fund which is uh, under my auspices. So we are given, each embassy is given a certain uh, 
pot of money and we run a competition each year. Uh, it's online uh, and it is aimed at supporting uh, civil society organizations and NGOs uh, on a wide swath of issues which are important to both countries. We, uh, we focus uh, particularly on supporting um, uh, indigenous communities, uh, women and children's issues, uh, and strengthening capacity in civil uh, engagement. Um, so there's a number of areas that we look at and we, we have one both for Suriname and for Guyana. So it's an annual process that, uh, that any civil society organization can apply for and then we make a determination. It's a finite amount of money, it's up to 50,000 Canadian dollars but uh, we've seen that that amount of money can be very impactful to civil society organizations to strengthen their capacity to do the work that they're doing. Beautiful, thank you very much, High Commissioner. We've been speaking with uh, Canadian High Commissioner to Guyana, Mr. Mark Berman, and he's been speaking on bilateral trade, MOU signing, and uh, all the big things that uh, can be had in terms of opportunities for both Canadians and Guyanese given this partnership. He's been holding this post here for almost 20 months and he has been doing a great job. He sees the great potential in Guyana and I think he said he's even looking to get an extension so he can continue to impact the great work of bilateral trade development. He spoke as well to the role of the Canada Guyana Chamber of Commerce and how important it is and the association with his office and the Chamber 